Well, hello and welcome. You're watching India Fights Back with me, Rajat Kane. As India continues to reel on the second wave, scientists working on a mathematical model to examine the COVID-19 spread forecast. The current wave will peak somewhere between April 2nd to 3rd week. Precisely, it says April 15 to 20. Now, as per the model, number of active cases, symptomatic cases would be or rather would hit high roughly a week later at the same level of around 10 lakh cases which was seen in September last year. Well, we saw the peak of COVID-19 pandemic in our country in September last week of 2020. So this is what the model, the mathematical model that has been worked by experts and of course like a member of uh, IIT Kanpur as well. So they have worked out the mechanism in which they are forecasting number of spread in terms of the rise of COVID-19 as we are reading under second wave. To discuss further on this issue, we are joined with Dr. Mahindra Agrawal. He is Professor IIT Kanpur. So many thanks for joining us. And Dr. Rana A.K. Singh, is Medical Superintendent from Ramanohulohia Hospital, Delhi. Well, many thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, Mr. Agrawal, you know, you, uh, you, are, you were involved in the National Supermodel Initiative. Now, as per you, the peak is expected to see something between 80 to 90,000 new infections per day. Well, today we have, like, as per the reports, we have more than 81,000 cases uh, that has been reported in today's early morning numbers. Now, as per you, uh, what is that we're going to see in the second wave that per you would peak in April 2nd to 3rd week, sir. Yeah, our model predicts uh, the peak to arrive somewhere around 20th of April okay. this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, the peak value as of today, which was, uh, we continuously are updating the model with the new data that comes in. Mm -hmm. The peak value is uh, expected to be around 1 lakh infections a day. Achha. And uh, so this peak will be of new infections. And once mm -hmm. new infections after that will start uh, going down, mm -hmm. but active cases will continue to rise for another week or so. And then they will also start coming down. Okay. Right, right. So that is uh, the findings of this mathematical model in which uh, Dr. Mahindra Agarwal is also part. Well, this team comprises of scientists and experts from different IITs, uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, ISI Kolkata, and CMC Vellore. Right. I'll come back to you, uh, uh, Dr. Kapu, Dr. Agrawal. Uh, many thanks for your opening remarks. Uh, Dr. Rana Ike Singh, uh, you know, we, we have been reading, we have been envisaging the second wave of COVID-19. Is this something that all of us were seeing that it'll happen? I mean, uh, are we prepared for it? Because 80,000 is fairly vast in terms of numbers, what we have seen today. I know numbers has been on rise, particularly in last week or so, from last week, I mean, yeah. When, uh, I mean, the kind of catastrophic disease which the COVID is, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, like, uh, it, it's, it's a one-year-old disease or so. So, when the numbers were going down, and the numbers had really gone down very, very significantly. Yes. At that yes. point of time, we were optimistic. I mean, optimistic, not really realistic, but we were optimistic that what if this going down trend ends up in disappearance of this catastrophic disease altogether. Hmm. Having said that, uh, we knew that partly it is wishful thinking rather than that it's going to totally disappear in a in a short span of say a year or so but that was a very very happy situation mm -hmm. now after a lull of say a month or so now the numbers have started going up especially you know like three four states in the country say kerala say maharashtra say punjab and even in delhi the numbers are going up so this trend of going up is not something we can be happy about. I mean, you know, there is yes. no doubt. Different names we can give to this, you know, 
uprise, surge, second wave, whatever, whatever nomenclature we use. But if the numbers are going up, this is not the best thing to happen. Having mm -hmm. said that, as head of a medical institute, I never lowered my guard. Believe me, if you can. Uh, when the number were going down, we were happy, but I never lowered my guard. Uh, you know, like every medical institution, every hospital, every health, health facility has got a certain infrastructure and certain strength. None of the institutes has got infinite strength. So mm -hmm. when we have to strike a balance, like uh, if, when we are, you know, like uh, keeping our resources reserved for COVID patients, then and we have never closed down the facilities for the non-COVID patient. So we it's a, it's a we keep this uh, uh, you know like in in a kind of dynamic equilibrium. If the COVID goes up, uh, then naturally you know non-COVID patients treatment it does take a dip. When the COVID is going down, the are are you know like output of non-COVID patients treatment goes up. So mm -hmm. at no stage of time. I lowered my guard. Yesterday only I had had meeting with all, uh, you know, like head of the departments who are involved in um, COVID treatment. And we all discussed that, yes, we were happy when it was going down. But now because we are seeing the rising train, we'll have to prepare ourselves uh, for like whatever comes in our way. You know, we have got infrastructure, we have got everything to cope with that situation. We could cope it last September, as you said, because when it was, you know, like last week or the last September, when so far the highest numbers we could cope with, we are prepared. There is no doubt about that. But there is a second aspect of it. When the numbers are going up, when we are, you know, looking at a kind of second peak or whatever. So as as a, that I you know statement I made as head of a medical institution, but now citizen of the country, I'm also, you know, like citizen of this country, as right. a citizen of the country, it is the responsibility of each one of us to try and contain this disease as best as possibly we can. And we right. have got only two methods to achieve that goal. One is the social vaccination, we, which we call, we are practicing for last one year, yeah. the masks, hand sanitization and the social distancing. And the second very important and strong weapon that has come into our hand that is, you know, to protect us against this, you know, deadly disease is the vaccination. Right. So I think all of us must rigidly practice the COVID appropriate behavior and all of us must come forward to take the vaccine at the earliest possible uh, time. Whenever your turn comes, no, no dilemma, no confusion, uh, no ambiguity in that. So collectively, we can, if we could take it down to, to, to the, you know, like la, you know, a month previous level when it was really, you know, going to touch the nadir, but now it has, you know, it is coming up. So if we continue to practice these two strong weapons, I am sure we will be able to win over this disease. Right, right. Dr. Rana Ike Singh, many thanks for your opening remarks. I'll come back to you. Uh, well, Dr. Agrawal, could we... Could you just elucidate more about the mathematical model that you've worked along with experts from IISCs uh, and other IITs as to what are the main findings besides uh, inferring that we'll hit the peak between April 15 to 20th? What other important findings were there in this model? Yeah, I think it's important to understand uh, uh, not just when the peak is arriving, but also what is the reason behind the sudden rise? Mm -hmm. As uh, Dr. Sa said that uh, everybody was expecting the pandemic to die out. February was a very good month. The numbers had come down very significantly. Mm -hmm. But then what happened? It started from Maharashtra and uh, spread over all the country. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, the in rate at which infection was spreading went up very significantly. If you look at pan-India wise, and that uh, comes out of our model, the rate at, of spreading of infection went up by more than 50%. Mm -hmm. And similarly, there were a number of people who had kept themselves protected by isolating themselves within the confines of their residences, not stepping out, 
So a large number of such people also stepped out. So right. that pandemic kind of had the opportunity to spread over a larger fraction of population. That mm-hmm. fraction also increased by about 20%. Okay. And a combination of these two is what we are seeing the result of that very sharp rise. Hmm. Uh, sir, in terms of the sharp rise, I mean, uh, would you also say there was a sense of complacency? Possibly we were like, okay, you know, numbers are going down, so let's just take it easy. Or there are other factors like mutants, which, which several experts have, have saying, I mean, uh, of course, like subject to a deeper study in that mm-hmm. issue, sir. Uh, yeah, it, certainly I would say it looks like both of them mm-hmm. combined. Uh, primarily reason being the complacency that okay. uh, those who had protected themselves so far, uh, they stepped out. So, and, but there, it, one cannot only blame the complacency here because it's just that after all, for how long people can keep mm, you know themselves important. away from yes. normal life. Schools open, colleges open, students started coming to co- classes, meeting each other. So the normal life as it resumed, uh, you know, the chances of infection spreading increased Mm -hmm. and that contributed. And as the Ministry of Health pointed out recently that a number of mutants are also being observed and some of them are faster spreading and they also contributed perhaps to this faster spread. Right, right, right. That's important. Uh, well, Dr. Rana Ekesing, you also agree, you know, we, we keep saying, okay, people are getting complacent, but somewhere down the line, you know, they, they all have to get back to the normal life routine. It's it's also about a lot of medical workers. It's also about doctors and frontline workers. I mean, they are the ones who are actually fighting this pandemic from day one, right over there, taking the first blow. At the same time, there are people, there are students, there are other persons, professionals who have to resume the normal life. So how does, I mean, how does one balance it out? I know there is always a question of being complacent, but at the same time, the normalcy has to be there. I mean, if you, if you, if you truly ask me, it's a very difficult question to answer. Mm-hmm. And why am I saying so? You're absolutely right. Can we keep the life as, you know, more or less hostage or at standstill for infinite period? Probably the answer is no. But if we go back to the, you know, the 2020 March or so, when we were getting the visuals from the countries like Brazil, like America, like Europe, uh, you know, France, other countries, and the kind of devastation which, which this disease has inflicted on those countries. And let us not forget that the, you know, they are the mightiest and the richest country. So mm-hmm. that kind of loss of human life uh, is, I mean, it, it, it really sends severs in your body and yes. mind that if we have to face that kind of situation, I mean, how will the country, the society uh, will face it? So what I'm saying, I'm, I'm also an advocate that the life should come back to normalcy. There is no doubt about that. But we also must try to prevent of this disease. So that, that complacence in the behavioral pattern of our people over last, you know, like uh, month or so. Uh, I mean, you know, that at least, you know, even Professor Agrawal has admitted that that could be one of the factors. That's not the sole mm-hmm. factor. So like say mutant variant or like a uh, newer yeah. variant, do we have a true control on them and mm-hmm. government, whatever best government can do, they are doing it. They are doing it, you know, like when the people are traveling from the areas or the countries where the newer newer variants are there. So that part is looked after by the government. But as an individual, as a citizen of the country, one thing is clear that of all the factors, this compromised corona appropriate behavior is definitely a factor. Seeing is believing. All of us step out of our house and once in a while we do get invitation to, you know, like attend marriages, do yeah. go to attend marriages. And if you enter respect, you will find that, yes, people have become very, very complacent. Either they are not wearing masks, they are wearing masks, they are covering, covering only their face, not the nostril. I mean, you know, there are a lot of things. Yes, so yes. Let us focus on what is in our control. And our control is, let us not 
try to say or believe that life should be um, at standstill for all time to come. But we have to do every possible thing to contain this upsurge by, as I said, we have got two weapons. Uh, you know, one is corona appropriate behavior and second is the vaccine. So that's my take on it. Right, right. right. Uh, Dr. Mahindra uh, Agrawal, you know, uh, I'm just uh, sort of discussing a bit of statistics with you. Uh, you know, we saw the highest rise in cases in mid-September, precisely on 16th of September, where we had met, uh, touched a peak of you know, 98,000 something odd. Like That was like 97,860. And the lowest that we have recorded so far of the daily rise after touching the peak was on February 2nd this year, where the numbers were 8,635. Now, uh, again, envisaging that the number of uh, the second wave, as uh, if, if we choose to call it second wave, will touch its peak in April. Now, hypothetically, how much time will it take to have some sort of a subsistence? Oh, that's a, a very interesting question. Uh, the two waves in mm -hmm. India are qualitatively different. Okay. The first one had a very gentle rise upward. Right. And then an equally gentle downward yes, slope. Yes, four and a half months it took, yes. Yeah. Right. Whereas this one has a very much sharper rise. Mm -hmm. And the nature of uh, such pandemic says that sharper the rise, sharper the fall. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should expect uh, once the peak is ar arrives that there will be a very sharp drop. And okay. uh, what you said, less than, we should uh, hit uh, less than 10,000 new infections a day by June. Okay, okay. So, but, but still, I mean, you're saying that for, for, for at least for a couple of months, we need to be extremely, extremely careful. Yes. And I agree with the Dr. Singh for yeah. completely mm -hmm. that uh, the two uh, prescriptions of his, corona appropriate behavior and vaccination, those are absolutely essential. Everything mm -hmm. else is out of our hand. We can't keep... The, life under lock and key forever. But these are the two things we can do. Hmm, right. Uh, Dr. Agarwal, just one last thing before I move to Dr. A.K. Singh and get his opinion. Uh, in, in the mathematical model that you have studied, and of course, like the numbers uh, that you have calculated, is there any, you know, qualitative analysis you have done in terms of any particular age group or, 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 or any particular, uh, say, cluster group that is more prone to getting... Uh, COVID positive uh, in the second wave? No, I'm afraid we haven't done any such analysis. We just looked at the number as a whole. Numbers, well. right, right, right. Uh, Dr. Rana Ike Singh, I mean, your take, I mean, uh, I mean which, which, which group per you should be extremely careful about this second wave? We know we have, we have, if we've been hearing about the youngsters, they should be extremely careful in particular with this wave. I mean, you know, uh, I, I must compliment Professor Agrawal and whole of his team to having that, uh, having worked out that mathematical uh, things and they have, you know, like scientifically predicted that we have got two, three weeks time in our hand. Mm -hmm. medical institutions, the healthcare workers and the society at large that we are going to hit the another peak, say three weeks. That means we have got a window period of three weeks mm -hmm. to rigidly stick to norms by which we can contain this disease and if we rigidly you know stick to those it is possible we, uh, let us wish and pray that the mathematical predictions if we you know join our hands follow everything rigidly that may ultimately prove wrong that's one way of looking at it about, about just professor agrawal said that the last year's peak was a uh, i mean it was a sudden and it was a uh, uh, i mean it was a gradual rise and gradual fall at that point of time, if we look at things, the norms were rigidly, I mean, they were pronounced, uh, you know, like at the stroke of the stroke of the hammer, they were rigidly followed. They were suffering associated, but that has, you know, like given us the fruit in terms of containment, uh, mm -hmm. containment and lower incidence and lower devastation by this disease if we compare to the other part of the world. But this time, I would look at this mathematical prediction with only one mind that we have got a window period of three weeks. Let right. us 
use this window period. Let us follow the corona appropriate behavior. Let us go out for the vaccination as I mean, as soon as our number comes so that we can we may not allow, you know, like uh, uh, allow this second surge or the increase in incidence to to reach to its peak uh, or, or, or its genesis. So that is in our hand. As far as the youth and uh, the other people are concerned, uh, if we look at this, I mean, the, the medical statistics over last one year, youths are getting infected, but youths usually are not suffering from severe illness and fatality rate is very, very low. Okay. However, beyond the age and especially with the comorbidity, if this disease affects or infects, then it can turn into a severe form and the fatality rate is very high. Hmm. So I'm not saying that the youth will be complacent. No, hmm. absolute no. But they, youth is a silver lining. Youth is power. Okay. So they have that power, but there is no need and there is no, I mean, I, I cannot advocate that because they are youth, they do not usually end up in severe disease, so they should be complacent. Needless to say that the second group, that 45 and above people with the comorbidity, the high, higher age group, they have to be extremely careful so that they don't get themselves infected. Hmm. That's important. Uh, so, yeah, please, please, sir, go on, right. You finishing it off? Yeah, I, 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 I have said on this count, you know. Right, right, right. Absolutely. So, it's not just any particular age group or any particular cluster group that needs to be careful. Everyone needs to be careful. And as Dr. Rana A.K. Singh says, given the analysis of, of, of Dr. Mahindra Agrawal and his colleagues, uh, if we are going to hit a peak in the third week of April, or fourth week of April end, we have three weeks with us to prepare ourselves so clearly, these are signals given by these two experts as to what we all need to do. Well, many thanks, sir, Dr. Mahindra Agrawal, for joining us and elucidating on this mathematical model that has been worked out by you. This is extremely, extremely important and more so for public at large to understand what we are staring at. And Dr. Rana Ike Singh, many thanks once again for joining us and talking us threadbare about how we have to deal with with this pandemic. Well, before we leave, here is a small appeal to all our viewers. Keep listening to experts. Do not listen to hearsay. Please follow COVID appropriate behavior. Keep, wash your, keep washing your hands. Keep maintaining physical distancing. Well, these are small things that can help us in defeating this pandemic. Well, many thanks for joining us on India Fights Back. That's it in this edition of the show. Goodbye.